everyone, it's Susan back again and this time we're going to make a pear ginger cheesecake. And this is a little bit of an extravagance in the raw food world because cheesecakes are very rich. Uh, we tend to enjoy them at certain times. I don't think they're a food that we probably are best eating every day, but uh, in our household I usually have one in the freezer, have a cheesecake of some sort in the freezer and if we feel like a little indulgence occasionally we might have a small slice of it. And it's, uh, cheesecakes are a really basic recipe that, uh, that we'll be making today that you can utilise in all different flavours and, and combinations. So when we make a cheesecake it's largely the, uh, the cashews that are used as the cream filling. We have a base and you can vary the base depending on what you'd like and today we're just going to use cashews which haven't been soaked and we're going to use some agave and we're just going to use some vanilla and salt and that'll just form a really simple crust but you could you could use a coconut crust with uh, um, dates or you could use a seed crust using sunflower seeds or um, we can we can be as creative as we want to be around crusts and you usually find that you need something to hold the crust together and a lot of people use a sweetener of some sort. Many, many of the crusts uh, utilise dates, fresh uh, medulla dates, and they are really beautiful. So you can put a couple, two or three dates in and that usually binds it and it sweetens it as well. Uh, so that uh, is often used in crusts and we, we could also use figs or we could use dried fruits. So, there's a huge uh, scope out there for what we decide to use with our crusts. And so today with the filling, we are going to make a filling which is going to incorporate pears and ginger, but equally you could make a chocolate one using cacao and you could put ras and layers of raspberries through it, or you could uh, make a passion fruit and lime one where you're putting passion, beautiful passion fruit through it and maybe some lime juice to sort of balance it up because we're looking at that balance again between the sweet and the sour and the salty and the bitter and the pungent. So if, if we decide before we make it just what we're looking for in our final product, so uh, what, what flavour would we like today or what taste would we like uh, or what do we have on hand in the fridge that we can use because often it's using fruits and uh, products that are readily available. We want to make raw food a simple exercise. It doesn't need to be a complicated one. And we want it to be fun. We want it to be pleasurable. We want to really connect with our heart when we're making it and have a lot of fun doing it. And if we're in our passion, I think it's going to taste good no matter what we do. So uh, today we're going to make this cheesecake. And if you have tasted cheesecakes before, they they had a large amount of butter and flour and cream and uh, cream cheese, all of those dairy products in them, as well as um, some fairly unhealthy grains was in the base that was often done with a flour, flour and butter base or flour and um, fat base. So today this is a healthy cheesecake, but at the same time, it's not something that you'd probably eat every day of the week. Uh, some people eat more of it than others and uh, that's, if we have a particularly sweet tooth, well, we may enjoy doing that. Um, so I'm going to just make the crust and I'll just show you how really easy it is and how simple it is to do this. We're going to use it in the food processor, but if you don't have these gadgets, it's probably a matter of just working out how you can make these things and still taste good. And I think with uh, raw cashew nuts, and I use the, the macro uh, raw cashews, and I think from my understanding, they're not truly raw, Cashews, I think, have a level of processing from from the plant to when we have them, even though they call them raw. Uh, but you could probably grind them, or you could you could you could roll uh, roll them so you break them up considerably. You could cut them quite fine with a knife and add these other products, and you'd still have a really nice base without using a food processor. So it's important to um, feel that you can use these recipes, even if you don't have some of the gadgets that I have in my kitchen. Yeah, so we've got our, our raw nuts going in there and uh, we just need to get a little spoon or something to get that last couple out. 
and this is just the simplest of recipes so in this case we're going to put in a quarter of a cup of agave and this will just sweeten it but you could equally use honey again or maple syrup or any of those particular um, sweeteners that we've spoken of in some of the some of the um, videos that we've made so just uh, be aware that the sweeteners are always uh, of choice uh, it will change the recipe slightly depending on the sweet the sweetener that you choose this is vanilla again so we've got some beautiful vanilla and it does smell just quite divine and we've got some salt and this is just how simple it is and really all we do is we just add this together so we're just going to blend it and I like to leave it quite chunky for our base but that's a personal preference you might like to have it really smooth in my case I just love to leave it really chunky and uh, not process it too much when we process nuts uh, we must remember there's a natural oil in the nut and if we over process it the, the end result can be quite oily and not particularly palatable it, it brings out all the oils and it it's not so nice particularly in a crust or something like that or if we're using walnuts pecans um, macadamias any of those nuts pine nuts they all have levels of oil in them and uh, I think it's important that we we uh, don't over process them the same with uh, almonds if we're using almonds uh, and walnuts are another one it's really good to soak them because when we soak our nuts we release a lot of the enzymes the natural enzymes in the nut so it becomes a lot more digestive and able to be digested but it also um, the nutritive value is released within the nut and I think also they are uh, scientific evidence has suggested that the fat content is, is reduced quite considerably once we soak the nut. So with almonds particularly there's a tannin on the outside of the skin and that's not particularly healthy for us so if we soak the nut with the tannin with the, with the, the skin on it you find that we drain the water off each day and we can keep the nuts in the refrigerator it's quite uh, brown the water because the tannin comes out of the nut the, the skin of the nut and so when we're eating raw nuts raw almonds it's probably a really good idea to soak them um, and you find that not only will it enhance the nutritive value but it will also release the tannin and we see that in walnuts quite a lot as well uh, some of the other nuts probably not quite so much so uh, always consider soaking them and if you're wanting a, to release uh, the creaminess, the natural creaminess in a nut, soaking it really brings that out. So it's like adding cream to our recipe. It, it really becomes creamy and yummy when, it, when it's soaked. So the, in the base of this particular recipe, I don't want it to be creamy, but when we get to the filling, I've soaked the nuts because I want it to be a really soft, smooth, creamy, creamy results so we're using the same nut but we're just using it in two different ways in the one recipe now you'll see how chunky that is and to me that's just perfect it's um it's really chunky it's really uh just gorgeous i think and uh but it, again it's a personal preference so you might like to make it much a nice smooth base or you might uh, prefer to do it like this so it took about two minutes in the food processor or two seconds probably is nearer the more accurate um, just to bring it to this chunky consistency and with raw food it's really fun to always consider the textures in raw food because we eat with our eyes and we have our taste buds are uh, interconnected with texture as well as flavor so if you've got smooth and you've got chunky and you've got your raw food cut in different ways processed in different ways it adds variety to the dish and brightness to the dish and you find that we are looking with raw food to create that um, 
variety and, and um, diversity in how we can use a single product but in a lot of different ways. So all I'm going to do now is just spread that into, the, into this little um, pan here and again we can make it like a crust where it comes up the side of the dish or we can choose to just leave it as flat in the bottom of the pan. And for, in my case today, I'm just going to choose for it to be flat because I love to slice this and when I put it on a plate, uh, it's beautiful when it's just like a base rather than perhaps a tart finish. So you can see there that it's just a beautiful, beautiful um, crunchy base that we've got and the texture and the flavour of that is going to be delicious because it's just got a little bit of sweetener with the vanilla and really that's all it is so you can see how simple how simple that is and we put that just like that and now we're going to leave that there because we're going to do the filling right so with our filling we're just going to use our blender again our blender's one of the key friends in the kitchen but equally we can uh, we could use a a whisk in a lot of cases. If we, if we haven't got a blender at home, we could probably whisk a lot of our food, we could grind it, we could put it in a mortar and a pestle so that we get a similar result. So again, it's important that you don't feel you can't make this recipe because you haven't got a blender or you haven't got this or that. Uh, obviously your end result may be not quite as good, particularly with your nuts, but these have been soaked so they're very soft and they're going to come into a very creamy consistency but if you um, put them in a mortar or pestle or you roll them and you cut them fine you'd still get a fairly good result it mightn't be quite as smooth but it still probably tastes quite delicious so the flavour would still be there so we're going to put today we're going to put three cups of cashews into our into our filling which is quite a lot of cashews and we've, we've cut up some uh, four ripe pears. Now you can use um, fresh pears obviously, that's the best. But if you don't have fresh pears, I guess, and you're not particularly fanatical about the raw food aspect, you could, you could use tin pears or tin fruit. Um, it, depending on just what your thoughts are around that. If you're strictly looking at raw food, you wouldn't do that. You would use fresh pears as we have over there. Uh, now we're going to put some agave in again. Um, now the agave we're putting in, we're using again today. I tend to use agave quite a lot in these recipes because it seems to blend beautifully with the recipe and it doesn't give its own flavour. If we use honey or we use maple syrup for argument's sake, it'll often come out as a very honey flavour or it'll come out as a very caramelly, maple syrupy flavour and it can sometimes take over the overall uh, flavour of the recipe. So agave is a very good one for that reason, but it's certainly not the only sweetener. We can use many different sweeteners and still have a very good result. So um, I'm using this because I, I really want to taste the ginger and I really want to be able to taste the um, the ginger juice and the pears in it. So we're going to have ginger juice. Now with ginger juice I put it through my juicer but equally you don't have to do that. You could grate ginger and you could put it through a nut bag so that you can squeeze the juice out. Probably a more difficult way of doing it but if you don't have a, a juicer you can still get ginger juice quite easily by just grating up a big lot of ginger and putting it through a nut bag and squeezing the juice out. So we put quite a lot of ginger in it ginger juice in it because we want to have that beautiful gingery flavour and you'll notice with cashews that they they tend to be quite bland when they're when they're blended up they can be quite bland unless they have quite a bit of uh, flavour that goes in and we've got some lemon juice today two tablespoons of lemon juice and and lemon always adds a brightness to the recipe it just seems to lift the whole thing so lemon and lime juice is something that in raw food you find you use a lot of uh, we have some vanilla here and again this beautiful smell you can the aroma of vanilla is quite intoxicating <laughs> just absolutely gorgeous 
and we have some cinnamon. Now all of these um, herbs and spices and things that we bring into our raw food uh, have medicinal properties as well and I think they support the body in general well-being and health, um, all provided by our wonderful creator. But at the same time, if we're not working with our emotions, I think uh, probably nothing will support the body too well. So it's really keeping all this in balance and recognising that it's not just about the food. In fact, it's probably very little about the food. It's a lot about the love we put into it. It's a lot about the passion we have for it, the appreciation we have for where it's come from, and all those who have contributed towards producing it. Because our farmers often have a, quite a challenge out there with all the changing seasons and with our changing climate at the moment, it's not always easy for our farmers to produce that beautiful, wonderful um, product. So there's a deep appreciation for our farmers as well. All right, so now we are going to put some coconut, melted coconut oil in there and coconut oil is used in this recipe to um, thicken it, set it. We, in, the, in, in past times we probably would have used things like gelatin or we would have used um, uh, eggs, you know, cooked e eggs cooked in, with our cheesecakes were often made in the oven, they were cooked and, and eggs went in, which gave it that sort of custardy, thick custardy flavour. So, in our case today we're using coconut oil and this uh, recipe will go into the into the refrigerator or into the freezer for a couple of hours so that the coconut oil will um, set and the whole recipe will set so we're going to blend this Smells gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. So it's quite a thick, it's quite a thick um, consistency. I'll pour it in so you can see how thick it is, and that will just go into our into our dish here, into our. Um... Now, most I I'm fortunate because I have a cake tin that has a spring, a spring to the side of it, and if you manage to have one of those. They're very helpful because when you come to release it out of the out of the cake tin, it will um, it will be much easier. Uh, if you haven't got a um, a covered cake tin like this one, if it's if if it's an aluminium one or a very basic cake tin, you probably need to line it with some uh, uh, some baking um, paper or maybe even some glad wrap so that you can get it out easily because that's that's quite um, difficult. Um, in my case I'm fortunate because I've managed to acquire one of these which makes it much easier. So we don't have to be too fussy about the top of it, we can make some nice swirls on it if we wish to. Uh, some people get out their piping bag and they pipe a beautiful uh, using some of the the product, they might um, pipe a beautiful um, decoration on the top of it. It's just up to you. I tend to keep mine very simple. I think simplicity is next to godliness in many ways. <laughs> but that's just a personal thought on it. I think God always has everything in such perfection without us interfering with it and uh, trying to make it better. <laughs> Right, so we have our beautiful um, cheesecake here which will now go into the freezer for a couple of hours. So I'll pop that in the freezer and I'll bring back our end, our end result. Alright, so we've taken our cheesecake, our ginger cheesecake, out of the freezer. Uh, uh, it's been there for a couple of hours and I'm just going to cut it so you can see the, the, the texture of it and how beautifully creamy and delicious it is with the base. And what we usually do now is we decide how we would like to decorate it and I've used, I used crystalline ginger along with some, um, some mint and some yacon syrup on the plate but in actual fact we don't need to do that, we can decorate it in any way we like so you can see that uh, adding a little colour to it is always 
makes it beautiful but you could have some pears on the plate you could um, utilize pears with some ginger as a side side dish so it's just up to the individual to be creative so please enjoy this absolutely wonderful recipe in your own homes and kitchens because you'll find it'll be delicious it's healthy and it's going to uh, be a great addition to any raw foods and uh, meals that you might choose to have together. <laughs>